Welcome to 10 Years Out, Stories from My Queer Community. I'm your host, Sam, and it is my 10 years out in June. My pronouns are she, her. I identify as queer, and I've been out for 10 years, thus the podcast. <laughs> Here with me today is one of my good friends, Roran. Hello, hello. Hi. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Congratulations on 10 years. Thank woot, you. Woot. Thank you. So some preliminary questions. Mm -hmm. um, what are your pronouns? How do you identify and how long have you been out? Um, okay. So I'm Roran, like Lauren with an R because people get very confused when they read the name. Um, I am, my uh, pronouns are she, her, and I identify as bisexual. And how long have you been out? I've been out. We had to do the math about this. Um, I, since 17. Okay. So, oh Lord. Sorry, got to do some quick math. At least close to 15 years, right? 2017? No, since I was 17. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so 14 years. Nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do we need to know about your story before we get into what you've learned since coming out? Ooh, okay, so the first thing is that I never came out to my family, mm. but I came out to the rest of the world. And at the same time, I'm loud and proud about being bisexual about it. But people, because I am married to a cisgender male, People assume that I am heterosexual, mm -hmm. but people assume that once someone that is bisexual marries um, a head or marries or enters a heterosexual relationship, they revert to being heterosexual. And I was like, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So I come from an Asian American background and in Asian households, you don't even have the conversation about sexual education. <laughs> mm. We don't even talk about sexual education. Uh, and for Asian women, it's a um, your worthiness as a female shifts drastically. Like I very distinctively remember up until I was 18, anytime I went to back to China or visit family in Korea or Japan, I get asked the question, do you prefer the U.S. better or do you prefer China better? as an example, and then that's quickly switched to at 18, do you prefer U.S. men better mm. versus uh, Asian men better? Mm. So it's like I was, uh, the moment I turned 18, I became a livestock on the m marriage market. <laughs> because I came out to everybody else, and it was just kind of like, hi, I'm Roran, I am bisexual, take it or leave it. Like, it was just so, like, Roran, Asian American. You pronounce my name like Roran, like Lauren with an R. Don't try to I'm trying to mess around with the Y. Like just don't, just don't. Like it was like, and then I'm bisexual. It was it was such a like rebellious kick that like anybody that knew me, post being seventeen, that was just they were just like, oh, I always knew you were this, or like they, there was no questioning, there was no rejection. They were like, okay, cool. There is hesitation in announcing it to my elderly grandparents or like direct parents in my family because there are other family members that uh, were closeted at the time that created a lot of pain. So it's not just a against sin because we don't have Catholicism in China. Like that's not our religion. Mm -hmm. Um. And in fact, transgender is more accepted mm -hmm. in China. We talked about this before the call that one of the most famous uh, night show hosts in China is transgender and her and her sex change was paid for by the Chinese army. So like it's but also gay marriage is not legal in China. So there is that like mm, it's allowed and tolerated, but not mm -hmm. like truly allowed. Um, it's there's no religious 
uh backlash right because again it's not there's no catholicism or christianity in in china i'm glad that you came on because i think you're the first person that i've talked to who hasn't grown up in an evangelical christian background (laughs) so okay this is this this is where my coming out story gets really funny is um i went to an all girls catholic school in Mm -hmm. high school at 14 and at that time i have not acknowledged like being bisexual or lesbian or any attraction i was deep 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 in the boy band loving phase Mm -hmm. but my introduction to like evangelical or christianity and their like like their uh the the traditional anger at lgbtq community um was I got sent to the principal office one day out of the blue. I was like, what did I do? And apparently there was a girl to this day. The identity has not been known to me. I have assumptions, but the identity was not known to me. And apparently she couldn't get out of bed or leave her bed because she was so distraught that she likes me. Oh, but I was asked if I came on to her. Uh-huh. Like I was so touchy feely uh-huh. and it confused her. So oh, there was no. like, I got asked <laughs> by the principal who was honestly not equipped at all to have this conversation. And she was like, Are you? She was like, Do you like girls? And I was like, um, No, I am overly infatuated with like this boy band that I'm obsessed over because I was at the height of my like boy band right. obsession world. Um, and I was like, huh, what? And that, that was my first, I was actually like my first introduction to LGBTQ language. Right. And I was, and simultaneously with, uh, Christianity. (laughs) Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. I hope that girl finally got out of bed at some point. I think she did. (laughs) It always rubbed me the wrong way, but I also came out of a culture where they, banned access to Christianity Mm -hmm. and so to me it wasn't the end-all be-all belief Mm -hmm. point right because I had a country where there is no end-all be-all religious point yeah yeah it makes such a difference yeah that's that's so interesting what have you learned since coming out it's all about progress at the end of the day right people are like I want change we want change and I was like change literally doesn't happen overnight the in the specific case of like lgbtq it is a similar narrative to a lot of different heritage pieces it's like it's a group that was people are like it's marginalized and i was like people don't understand what the word marginalized means but they understand the language of this this person who is a human being who has rights to be treated and respected as a human being was treated not as a human Mm -hmm. and pushed down Mm -hmm. and having pride month and yes there are legal legislation that we are fighting for in pride month but the overarching tone is that we just want humans to be treated as human beings Mm -hmm. it's bite-sized progress like we're Mm -hmm. still seeing a lot of um overblown proportions of hate that is dehumanizing other people uh using scare tactic tropes that is also based a lot on misinformation half the time Mm -hmm. um like the whole target scandal like that was that was just completely blown out of proportion i don't even understand what people are mad about so okay so and people need to understand there's two things social media is a reflection of humanity and it operates in an engagement like the people, the public's people court of opinion. Mm. So everybody has an opinion. Mm-hmm. There are two sides usually in this argument most of the time in these topics, but there's no judge basically moderating right. it, right? right? Like there's no one calling BS and rolling people in instead of an algorithm that creates these rabbit hole tunnels. And so the ripple effect of this is what happened is a single female who created misinformation by physically taking a product from the adult section and putting it into the kids section and saying that they are offering this 
a binding swimsuit for kids and grooming oh. kids. And it has been proved time and time and again that that was not true. The problem is twofold. The first fold is um, that it hit mass media where you had um, Fox News in this very specific case. They didn't fact check her and mm. took the TikTok video as fact and then didn't elaborate on the topic. Like I watched the actual Fox News clip and I was like, where's the extended narrative? Where's the con? You can take that viral video and then add context. That's part of journalism, but there was mm -hmm. no context added. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it that was the mass media narrative. And then the the actual like engagement on social is what happened is, is that this woman has an audience because she talks about gun ownership. Um, it also rabbit holes into can rabbit hole into extreme. So that video happened. And then simultaneously after that, there were a couple of videos created by gun accounts. That's uh, there was video of a man holding an AR 15 saying, I am against this. And if target doesn't take these stuff down, I'm going to go in and shoot up a target. Wow. That's the video. And it takes like a 24 hour cycle of videos being reported for it to be taken down. Right. But in that, that 24 hour cycle is all it takes to, for it to mushroom even more. And so that That's expanded crazy. into bomb threats, people going and vandalizing on these pride displays in the store. Yeah. And then eventually Target got to a point where they're like, we have to pull it down for the safety of our people. And then that's where you hear liberal side media bashing them. They're like, you can't do selective pride. And I was like, businesses can have a voice, but they also have boundaries in how they operate. And they said, and what Target, Target has, people are like, oh my God, Target does this. I never knew Target did this. Why would I ever support Target? And I was like, Target's been doing a Pride Month thing, like the same way they do in a Black-owned thing for like years. Even like, Walmart does. Even Walmart has a Pride section. Oh, even Walmart. Wow. Even Walmart has a Pride section? Yes. Like, that's like a branding. Okay. Yes, they have yeah. Pride tees. They have Pride. They literally have made a shirt this year that says Pride or Die. Pride or Die. I mean, that's terrible, but also Walmart made it. <laughs> I went into Target today because one of my guests who I've had on had this really cool rainbow shirt on and he mm -hmm. said he got it from Target. And so I went in to see if I could find one and I did. And then in the pride section, I also found this really cool shirt that I'm obsessed with. It is my first short sleeve button up collared shirt, first of all. Second of all, it says, Your story matters. Your I story love. matters. Yeah, it says, Break yeah. the mold. And it says, Speak up. Oh, it's so, it is my new favorite shirt. And this is from Target's yeah. Pride section. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Like people are like, Oh my God, it's there in the kids section. I was like, Brands, retail brands have a pride section the same way they have a Christmas section. Mm -hmm. It is literally in the same physical location and they change it mm -hmm. for Halloween, for Christmas. Like, it's been this way since 2019, y'all. Yeah. Before the pandemic. I want to go find... back to what you were saying yeah. about small progress and progress mm. in bite-sized chunks because mm -hmm. we have made progress. Um, like, I just recently watched an Andy Warhol documentary and he spent a lot of time in nightclubs and surrounded by the LGBT family. And um, things were so different back then compared to how they are now. Like so much more oppressed, so much more dangerous. And plus the whole the whole AIDS epidemic, you know, was just like coming out and at its peak. And that's crazy. But there has been so much progress between... Yeah, the, I mean the '90s and now, mm -hmm. that we we have to celebrate the progress too. We have to celebrate the progress because as human beings, we need to know why we do something, and then we need to get affirmation of why we do something. Right, like the instant gratification right. thing is there. Yeah, we but need that reward. Like, yeah, it, it's like we have made that progress, and. In acknowledging it, we it gives us the strength to continue going after the stuff because, like, right. the progress that we've made 
it's a little it's a big old ball knot it feels like an iceberg because you're like oh i just fixed this iceberg but it's really this like deep yeah and it's so many layers that we have to like unbind it's like a ball of rubber bands i know but rubber bands are easier i'm talking like hardcore knots that you just gotta get we wish he had nails like nails of steel to get out of yeah like that's what it feels like and i'm glad that it's easier i think it's also seeing the difference seeing the conversation is huge because it's when it's it's when human beings are not represented or hidden Mm -hmm. that it creates otherism like if you Mm -hmm. feel like you're othered it eats away at you because there's Mm -hmm. no sense of belonging like we are children when they are born are so in tune to who they are they are so they belong to themselves and it is society that strips it away because they society says you have to belong to the group you have to belong to the crowd that's so deep Rohan. i have never heard anybody say it like that and i i appreciate that it's so true though most of us have to find back to ourselves right because when we do that we tap into ourselves that un in that infinite energy of compassion collaboration and critical thinking like that's what we tap into and that's what Brene Brene Brown talks about when she talks about true belonging is when we belong with ourselves Mm. um and it's it's that piece we are social creatures we do want to interact with other humans but we also need to do it with ourselves there's it's very easy for me as a bisexual woman who is married to a cisgender male to say that life is good like i have the privilege to not get it as bad which means i have i i have more energy to stand up for it a lot of people have issues with trans as well and like people are like oh well okay gays are fine lesbians are fine buzzes are queer fine and then they just get caught up in this being trans situation and i was like you do realize that no one is actually using this to inflict harm on another person. Mm-hmm. In fact, that person is so unseen that they hate themselves so much that they have complete they're so unaligned to themselves at a at a very core level. And they're trying to they're taking a very brave step like people are like yeah they're trans i was like just do people understand the level of danger involved with like doing this transition do they understand that i was like one does not mess with hormones Mm. this is not just they're like oh it's just plastic surgery and i was like no it's not a comfortable thing to go through (laughs) i think of like for for trans uh people they were born in tuned to their soul and then they see their physical manifestation unable to reflect that. Right. And that's like, and taking that deep, brave step coming into it. Like, that's like the ultimate courage. And I commend that. Yeah. Yeah. So is that what you wish people understood? Or what do you wish people understood? I wish people understood at the end of the day, these human beings are just trying to be human. mm yeah, they're trying to live their best lives. Mm-hmm. Their most authentic like, lives. Yeah. Like, and it's like being in that like hidden insider <laughs> mood, right? Where like people are like, oh, you don't get it as bad. It's like, yeah, I don't get it as bad. Like a direct hate at me. And I'm thankful for that that I've not because I've been through I have plenty of other pain that I've gone through (laughs) like I'm very thankful that I don't have that but there's this shame when you see someone else be attacked dehumanized you are also equally being attacked and dehumanized Mm -hmm. not dealing with the brunt there's that ripple effect right it's like they go after them they're gonna go after me and so I have to keep my head down to not be seen but then at that point it's like I'm not gonna be seen and 
then then you lose yourself right like Mm -hmm. that's the sliding slope of depression and what I want people to understand and see in terms of like progress is like people are just trying to be human they're not stealing your jobs (laughs) they're not stealing your your significant others (laughs) I'm not stealing anything. They're just trying to be them. Yep. If you could go back to your past self and tell her something, what would you say? <sighs> your pre-coming out self. Oh, well, my pre-coming out self. Oh, my God. Uh, well, my pre-coming self was highly suppressed and su- depressed and suicidal because I was ostracized and othered at every single level, not just at the coming out as bisexual level. That was... Just- Coming out as bisexual was probably the easiest thing compared to everything else. <laughs> um, but I guess what I would say to her is that loving someone starts with loving yourself. Mm. Having an equal, fulfilling relationship where two souls are growing alongside each other and having that special human in your life is not based on gender or power dynamics. Or anything like that but it starts with you respecting yourself and respecting the other person mm-hmm. yep that's good mm-hmm. okay i've been putting everyone on the spot and asking if you have a quote or song lyric that you would like to send us out on compassion becomes real when we recognize our shared humanity mm. by pema children mm-hmm I love that. Thank you so much for coming on, Roran. This has been a pleasure. Thank you to all the listeners for tuning in to another episode. And until next time, have compassion for yourself and somebody else. Ah, Because if you're going to love yourself, how the hell are you going to love someone else? As RuPaul says. (laughs) Bye.